everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel Physios Healing Touch. So today I will tell you all these six tests that are used to diagnose SI joint dysfunction. But before that I want to say something that if you think I contribute something in your knowledge then please like my videos whenever you watch it because it helps in YouTube algorithm and in turn it helps me. So I hope you can do this much for me. So you cannot diagnose SI joint dysfunction in a patient just by doing one test. So just by doing one test on patient, you cannot diagnose that person as SI joint dysfunction. You should perform at least two to three tests. And if two to three tests are positive, then only you can diagnose that person as SI joint dysfunction. Then only there is high probability that that person has SI joint dysfunction. So you should perform at least two to three tests. According to Leslet et al, he said that to diagnose SI joint dysfunction, you should perform at least few provocative tests, which I will tell you in a while. For example, thigh thrust test along with pelvic distraction test. So if both these tests are positive on patient, then there is high probability that that person has SI joint dysfunction. The first test which I am going to tell you is thigh thrust test. And the sensitivity of this test is 88% and specificity is 69%. And due to this, it has moderate clinical value. For this, examiner passively flex the patient's hip up to the 90 degree. And with another hand, he palpate the sacroiliac joint. Now to provoke the symptoms, therapist will apply a downward thrust through the knee. This downward thrust will create a posterior shearing force on the sacroiliac joint and because of that patient will experience pain at the sacroiliac joint. So patient will complain about his usual symptoms. Now the next test is pelvic distraction test and the sensitivity of this test is 60% and specificity is 81% and it also has moderate clinical value. Now for this, put both of your palm over the ASIS of the patient and then apply a slow, sturdy, posterior lateral force on ASIS. Maintain that force for 5 seconds. Now remember, you don't have to apply a forceful pressure in any of these tests. You just have to apply a gentle pressure because these are just provocative tests and not manual therapy thrust. It will be considered positive if patient experience similar symptoms or pain at the SI joint. Now the next test is pelvic compression test and the sensitivity of this test is 69% and specificity is also 69% and due to this it has weak clinical value. For this patient will be in sideline position and his hip and knee will be moderately flexed. The therapist will apply pressure by putting his hand over the upper portion of the iliac crest. After that, the therapist will apply a slow downward thrust three to four times. If patient experience pain at SI joint or experience familiar symptoms, then it is positive. Now the next test is sacral thrust test. The sensitivity is 63% and specificity is 75% to which it has weak clinical value. Due to weak clinical value, it should always be performed in a cluster. That means you should not perform one test but you should perform at least two to three tests to diagnose any person. So it should always be performed in a cluster and not only single test to be performed on patient. For this, patient will be in prone line and therapist will put his hand over the patient's sacrum and then apply a downward thrust. In this, a shearing force develops between the sacrum and ileum. Now remember this thrust should be slow and not like the manual therapy thrust. If this test provokes similar symptoms, then it is positive. But if it does not create any pain, then it is negative. Now the last two remaining tests are Faber's test, also known as Patrick's test, and Gensling test. The reason why I am putting these two tests at the end because it has very weak clinical value and very low accuracy to diagnose SI joint dysfunction. First is Faber's test. 
its sensitivity is 50% and specificity is 56% and due to this it has very little clinical value. In this the meaning of favor means patient do flexion, abduction and external rotation of patient's hip as you can see. So that's why it is known as favor. Now with one hand therapist will slowly move the tested limb towards the examining table. Now this is a negative test because the tested limb falls parallel with the opposite leg but if it was a positive test the knee will remain above the opposite straight leg as you can see in this video. If patient experience symptom in any of the two provocative tests then it is highly suggestive of sacroiliac joint dysfunction but if there is no pain in two tests then it considered as negative for sacroiliac joint dysfunction. Next is Genslane test. Now to diagnose right side sacroiliac joint dysfunction the sensitivity is 53% and specificity is 71%. And to diagnose left side SI joint, sensitivity is 50% and specificity is 77%. Now there are two ways to perform Genslane test. First is in side line and second is in supine line. So in side line, patient will flex his knee against his chest and the therapist will extend the uppermost leg and with his other hand he is stabilizing the pelvis. If this test provokes symptoms, it can be due to sacroiliac joint lesion, hip pathology or any nerve root lesion. So to find exact cause, carefully watch where patient is pointing his finger. If it is around sacroiliac joint, then it is probable that it is a cause due to sacroiliac joint lesion. Now Ganslane test in supine, it is not that much better as compared to sideline because in sideline the amount of hyperextension becomes more but in supine line it becomes limited. So that's why it is not that much better and the positions will be same and in this the therapist will apply a downward pressure from the knee joint. It is considered positive if it provokes similar symptoms. Now Genslane test is not that much accurate test to diagnose SI joint dysfunction and due to which Laslate et al excluded this test from his cluster of tests which diagnose SI joint dysfunction which I, which I have already explained you in starting. All the four tests which I explained in starting is really important to diagnose SI joint dysfunction. So yeah, I hope it was a knowledgeable video for you all and please, please support my channel more and more. Your likes and comments motivate me to keep uploading such knowledgeable videos more and more.